Welcome to r slash Petty Revenge, where we share stories of small victories over those who have wronged you. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. And the first story is, second massive party in three months, police called, time to get petty. It's been quiet, a little too quiet. There's a family who lives two floors above me in an apartment block who have managed to peeve everyone off by having a massive party that got out of control almost three months ago. I got home today around 5 p.m. from the gym and I can hear them on their balcony making a lot of noise. I push it out of my mind and go about having a shower, making some dinner, making the dog some dinner, watching a little Netflix, then getting ready for an early night as I have to be up at 3 a.m. the next morning. I put some earplugs in, close my eyes and drift off to sleep. Boom! A massive crash wakes me up. I sit bolt upright in bed and groggily check my phone. 10 p.m. I make my way from the bedroom to the backyard. To get to my backyard, you have to open a big sliding glass door, which is also surrounded by floor-to-wall glass windows that allow me an unobstructed view of the backyard. I open the door and see a soccer ball sitting there and fresh imprint of the ball on one of my glass windows. Someone has thrown the ball down into the backyard. It's ricocheted off the backyard walk that separates my yard from the street and hit my window at force. I look up at the noisy neighbors on their balcony and there are four kids screaming at the top of their lungs and throwing various bits of debris into my yard. Plastic bottles, a stray tennis ball. I yell to them, Hey, be quiet please, I'm trying to sleep. The kids rush inside laughing. I go back inside only to hear them rush back out and continue throwing stuff into my yard and yelling. Fuming, I jump into the elevator and make my way up two flights and knock on the neighbor's door. I hear muffled voices giggle and say, Shh, he's outside. More laughing, but the loud yelling and music continues. I knock again loudly. Nothing. I make my way back downstairs, checking my phone. It's now getting close to 11 p.m. I call the police. I explain to the officer who answers about the noise level, the screaming kids, the fact that they're throwing all types of stuff into my yard, potentially damaging my property. I also point out if he runs my name and address, he'll see previous complaints against these people. The officer confirms that he's seen several complaints from me and other tenants in the building. As he's looking up the past complaints, he asks, is that them? I can hear the screaming and music. Me, yes, officer, I'll send a car over right now. I sit back and wait, and wait, and wait, checking my phone. It's now 11.55 p.m. I go to the front security door and ring their buzzer. I can hear the obnoxious shrill buzzing reverberate in their apartment. A woman picks up. Woman, hello? Me, yeah, can you keep it down please, it's almost midnight. Woman, who is this? Me, doesn't matter, just keep it down please. Woman, oh, okay. Hangs up. I sit and wait. Someone turns the music up louder. I ring their buzzer again. And again, a young male voice answers. Male, what? Me, if you don't stop, next calls to the police. Male, you can threaten us all you want, we don't care. Me, I'm not threatening, if you don't stop this, I'm calling the police. Male, we have friends over, we're gonna be as loud as we want for as long as we want. Frustrated, I go back down to my apartment, put on a movie and wait for the police. I'm startled awake by my own apartment buzzer. I walk over and answer it, it's the police. I look at the time, it's 1am. I'm annoyed it's taken them so long, and the upstairs neighbors are still raging on. I open the door and await the officers as they make their way down. Immediately they're sympathetic. They can see I'm exhausted and hear the noise. I explain everything to them. The male officer explains that even though they're the owners, they need to abide by noise ordinance laws and also the bylaws of the building commission. He takes my statement, asks what apartment number they're in, bids me good night and heads up to speak to them. I hear them knocking on their door. No answer. Police. It's the police. Open up. I hear the door open, music is finally turned down and what ensues is a 30 minute conversation of the neighbors saying that they're the owners and can do whatever they want. The police quickly shut them down, saying that they're disturbing the peace and violating various other codes and laws. Finally, the police leave at 1.45 AM and there's silence in the apartment block. Now for the petty revenge. Two days later, I'm heading out to walk my dog and I can hear someone pressing a buzzer over and over again. I get to the front security door, it's the male that answered the buzzer that night holding coffees and has obviously locked himself out. He looks annoyed and has probably been out there for ages. He sees me coming and relief washes over his face. He'll be able to go through the locked security door as I make my way outside, or so he thinks. I crack the security door open, let my dog go through first and then I slip through quickly. He bends down to pick up a small bag of goods and as he's about to walk through, I slam the security door, locking him outside. He literally stands there, shocked and also peeved off. I smile down at my dog as we go for a very long walk. Take that, you jack, eh? The second story is, Naughty mother? Santa's checking his list twice. 
I had a summer job at the end of high school, taking photos of children with Santa at shopping centers. The Santa visits were free and paid for by the shopping centers for promotional and marketing purposes. Families had to pay for photos if they wanted us to take them, but otherwise the experience was free and the kids got a small gift from Santa when they left. Some smart person in upper management thought it would be a good idea to order plastic recorders as gifts for the children. Well, that went down about as well as you can imagine. After lots of complaints, the management eventually ordered some small toy cars and animals and things of that sort. Everyone was much happier. When I started my shift one morning, I was going through the room I'd been assigned and was making sure everything was set up for taking photos and the kids and everything. I filled up Santa's bag with toys and was ready for the room's first visitors at 8am. In walks Santa with a spare Santa bag with a few things in it. From the bag's shape, it looked like there were some plastic recorders in it. I mentioned that management had provided us with some alternative toys due to the complaints from parents. He chuckled and let out a jolly ho 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 and the children just love them. I knew right away I had the always in character Santa. I'd heard about him but not worked with him before. The first few visits went really well. The families in line had waited for 1.5 hours that morning. LPT, visit Santa in the afternoon, it's always quieter. And the children were all very well behaved and really excited to meet Santa. When each of these children would arrive, this Santa would pull out a clipboard and consult his list of whether the children had been naughty or nice. Spoiler, Santa would joke with them sometimes, but they were always listed as nice. I was impressed with how much effort he put into the character and the acting for the children. They all loved it. Santa was giving out the new toys, too, not the plastic recorders. On about the fourth or fifth visit, we had a family with a mother, we'll call her Naughty Mother, and her two children who were dressed up in formal attire. The children were about four or five, I guess. After a few minutes of the children interacting with Santa, Naughty Mother turns to me and says, do you know how to take a good photo? Yes, I said. I mean, I've been taking them all summer, so I hope so. I'll be the judge of that, says Naughty Mother. Santa gave me a subtle look, as if he overheard Naughty Mother and disapproved. Santa was making his list. Naughty Mother announces in a high-pitched giddy voice that the children will have a photo with Santa now. She begins rearranging everything, moving the trees, moving bags and other paraphernalia to make it look Christmassy. After a solid five minutes of this nonsense, with her repeatedly bossing everyone around, her children, me and even Santa, she finally takes a seat next to Santa and without saying anything else just says in the same high-pitched giddy voice, cheese. I take the photo. It looks terrible because she's moved the tree and other things which are now blocking the lights we have set up. Also, the children look bored because they've been sitting still for too long. The Santa had a wide grin, but he was a pro. Before I can even look up to explain that we need to move some things for better lighting, Naughty Mother has got up out of her seat saying, let's see. She sees it on the screen and basically has a complete outburst, cursing me out before I can even explain. She starts going on about how I must not know what I'm doing, etc, etc. Santa steps in at this point and says, now, now, this little helper of mine is quite good at taking photos. Why don't we try taking another one? Momentarily embarrassed, Naughty Mother puts on a fake smile and agrees. I quickly grab a small ladder and change the angle of some of the lights and move the tree slightly. I get the children to jump up and do a big stretch and then get them back into position, tell them a dumb joke and take the photo. It's perfect. Everyone's smiling, good lighting, all good. Naughty Mother, not to be outdone and still perhaps a bit embarrassed says, upon coming up and looking at the screen, that's better. Why couldn't you have just done it like that the first time, dear? As I'm apologizing to Naughty Mother for the inconvenience, Santa reaches into his bag and produces three plastic recorders. He gives one to each child and starts teaching them jingle bells. Naughty Mother's fake smile got really wide. The third story is Overprivileged Soccer Moms When I was 15 or 16, I worked at a local video rental place. It was privately owned and was bootleg as heck. Pretty sure the owner used it as a front for something shady, but that's neither here nor there. The boss was too cheap to pay more than one person per shift, so I had the slow Wednesday and Thursday night shifts all to myself. We were in this wicked rich yuppie town, Concord, Massachusetts, and 90% of our business consisted of local soccer moms bringing their kids in for a movie night. Most of these women were terrible people, overlords to their spoiled flock who would throw credit cards around without thinking twice and would condescend everyone they deemed beneath them. We had a very basic computer system at the time and there was a built-in function that wouldn't allow someone to rent another movie if they had over $10 of late fees on their account. The employees had the ability to overwrite this at their discretion or to lower the fees if they thought it appropriate. Generally speaking, I was the guy who would waive any and all late fees, reason being that my boss was a cheap F and I didn't worry at all about making money for him. If the customer was nice to me, I'd waive their fees, no questions asked. Anyway, one day this woman comes in with a bunch of kids. If I remember correctly, it was five or six, roughly 12 to 13 year old boys. The kids were running around, pulling things off the shelves, making lots of noise, punching each other, peeving off other customers and peeving me off as well. The woman didn't do SH about it. She sat there gossiping on her cell phone, not caring about the scene her kids were causing. 
Being a fairly timid and non-confrontational person by nature, I didn't say anything and just figured I'd clean up the mess when they left. So the woman finally comes up to the counter with like eight different movies, a few video games and a bunch of candy. She's standing there on the phone still, shoves the stuff at me across the counter and doesn't even acknowledge my presence. So I look up her account. Boom, $120 worth of late fees and four titles rented for six plus months and still not returned. So I tried getting her attention, saying something like, excuse me, ma'am, ma'am, while her back is turned. She gestures me off. So I stand there and do nothing, waiting. She finally hangs up a minute or so later, turns to me and says something snarky, like, well, what's taking so long? So I explain, ma'am, you have a very outstanding fee on your account, and I can't let you rent any movies until this is paid, and the missing movies are returned. She flips an SH, starts ranting that her daughter rents things in her name, never returns anything, doesn't pay fees, and that she herself has done no wrong, and the fees should be cleared, and she should be able to rent, etc., etc., I nod but say, this account still owes $120, and I can't allow you to rent until it's paid. Company policy, ma'am. I'm sorry, but I don't make the rules. She starts going off again, saying ridiculous things like, I know the owner. He'll wipe out the debt in a heartbeat. You'd better let me rent or I'll complain to him about how terrible his employees are, and you'll be fired, etc., etc. I tell her he's out of the country, which was true, and can't be reached. Not true, and she still owes $120. Getting truer by the second. She bees some more and finally pulls out the card. We had this ancient machine that for reasons unknown to me would only read a magnetic strip correctly if you wrap the card in a plastic grocery bag. I couldn't explain to you why, but it was the only way the D thing worked. So as you can probably guess, I ran the card with no plastic wrap. Denied. Tried it again just for looks. Denied. I printed out a receipt and asked if she had cash. She didn't and she was rip sh about the card. I showed her the receipt saying card not accepted and feigned indifference. She asked, uh, violently demanded that she speak to a manager. I happily informed her that I was the manager on duty and was indeed the only employee in the store. She stormed out and walked across the street to the bank, came back a few minutes later with the money and practically threw it at me. I took the payment and said, now, about those overdue movies, I don't suppose your daughter would like to return them for you so you can rent these movies? I got the worst death glare I think I've ever received, and my mother can practically shoot lasers from her eyes, and the woman abandoned her stack of movies and stomped out. Not sure if we ever saw her again, but at the time, 15-year-old me was so proud of myself for staying cool under pressure and effing with this woman. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.